Somebody said, do you think machines will have emotions someday? No, they won't, because it serves no purpose. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. If a woman's in an automobile accident with her kids in the back of the car, the car turns over and the gasoline starts flowing toward the engine, which is hot, it'll explode. If she says, oh my God, my kids are trapped in the car and there's kind of fires breaking out, I hope somebody comes to help. If she picks up wood, smashes a window, take the kids out, that's emotions converted to action. We're not too interested in emotions, we're interested in what you do with it. I think I can say this, that, that most people really don't know how to raise children. I wanted to communicate with my little boy when he was just a few months old. Now that's a time when you can't communicate with the language. But he was in a crib and I put a ball painted yellow at one end of the crib, a real ball. And the kid saw it, it was stuck out, and he grabbed it. When he grabbed it, lights went on in a circle above the crib. So he let go. He was so amused by it, he let go. Then he saw, because <laughs> it stopped. He didn't know why it stopped. But after he grabbed the ball six times, he knew that ball made the lights go on. Once that was established, I put a different color ball at the other end of the crib. And he crawled over before he could speak and grabbed that ball right away. But no lights went on on the ceiling. He looked up, but on the wall, lights went up and down this way, see? So he knew that that controlled the ceiling lights, this one controlled the wall lights. By the time he was three, four months old, he had six panels of lights. When he wet his pants, he'd squeeze one. Mom would come in and change the diapers. So, in other words, you children really want to know how the world works. He would, the kids want to know everything. And we give them Jack and the Beanstalk and the Mickey Mouse Club. Kids really ready to learn how the body works. They want to know how the heart pumps blood through. Parents don't know those things. So when you say, should we educate our own children? You can't, unless you're educated yourself. You know, a priest said to me, I don't believe you. I know two people in the same home. One became a priest, the other a gangster. If environment is everything, how do you get those differences? And I said, the minute you treat one kid different than the other, you get the differences. You give kids Cinderella, artificiality, and you tell them to be honest. You always tell children to be honest. When they say, where do babies come from? The stork brings a baby. That's a lie. Then you ask the kids, say, Daddy, does Santa Claus climb down every chimney? You say, yes, that's a lie. And so we lie to kids and then we tell them to be honest. You know, we lie about everything, almost everything. That's the kind of world we live in. It's so full of shit that there's no bad language. It's just that way. So if you really want a better world, you have to know what makes criminals, what makes artists, what makes great painters. Environment makes a gangster or a priest. I went to a group of psychologists and said, do you believe there is such a thing as human nature? They said, yes, one is jealousy. I said, give me an idea of what you mean by jealousy. I always do that to know, to try to understand the other person. He said, when I reach for my cat and put it on my lap, my dog growls. That's what I mean by jealousy. So I said, I'm going to show you some experiments that I've done. I had a dog and a cat. I always had a lot of dogs and cats and raccoons and other animals, and I'm interested in their behavior.
I gave the dog fresh liver, little bit, and then picked up the cat. Fresh liver, little bit, and then picked up the cat. Gave the dog fresh liver and picked up the cat. I did that 20 times. And when I reached for the cat, the dog's tail would wag. So if it were inborn, he would still grow. You know what I mean? If it was conditioned, he wouldn't wag his tail when I picked up the cat. We were wanderers from the beginning. When the fruits or nuts were ripe, we were there. We followed the herds in their annual migrations. We rejoiced in fresh meat. A few of us cooperating accomplished what many of us, each hunting alone, could not. Making it on our own was as ludicrous to imagine as was settling down. Working together, we protected our children from the lions and the hyenas. We taught them the skills they would need and the tools. Then. As now, technology was the key to our survival. It might be a familiar progression, transpiring on many worlds. A planet newly formed placidly revolves around its star. Life slowly forms. A kaleidoscopic procession of creatures evolves. Intelligence emerges, which, at least up to a point, confers enormous survival value. And then, technology is invented. It dawns on them that there are such things as laws of nature, that these laws can be revealed by experiment, and that knowledge of these laws can be made both to save and to take lives, both on unprecedented scales. Science, they recognize, grants immense powers. In a flash, they create world-altering contrivances. Some planetary civilizations see their way through, place limits on what may and what must not be done, and safely pass through the time of perils. Others, not so lucky or so prudent, perish. <laughs> 